Hello everyone, today I'm going to be explaining to you the two general categories of fascia which are the superficial and the deep fascia. So beginning with the superficial fascia, it's the general coating of the body. So we have a skin and underneath the skin a general coating of the body which is called superficial fascia. So it is made up of uh, connective tissue with large amounts of fat so it serves as an energy fat reservoir and it facilitates movement of the skin. What do I mean by facilitates movement of the skin? So let's say I do this movement. This movement can be done, if you don't have the, deep, if you don't have the superficial fascia, I can't do this movement. So it will be very hard for me. So the superficial fascia facilitates movement of the skin. Now it's, that's it for the superficial fascia, beginning with the deep fascia. The deep fascia are actually fibrous sheath. Uh, there are fibrous sheath which uh, invests the body beneath the superficial fascia and at the same time it's uh, devoid of fat and usually inelastic and tough so uh, it holds basically the structures really hard so that uh, it prevents it from any injuries or dislocation of any part or any, or any structure actually so uh, the modifications of the deep fascia it covers the, the muscle from the outside as an epimyosium and, and, and the, the fasciculus as a perimyceum and the fibers as an endomyceum. What I mean by this, let's say I have a muscle, cross section of a muscle, and I have fasciculus. And I have fibers, okay? So, uh, the outer layer is covered by something called an epimyceum. Then we have the fasciculus, which is the inner layer of this muscle, which is called uh, perimyceum. And we have the fibers, the small, small fibers, which are called endomyceum. So this is th the same thing with this. We have the nerve. The nerve is uh, it's called in a different way actually. The first part, the first nerve, is called uh, the, the biggest part of the nerve, the outer, the outer surface, uh, is covered by an epineurium. And um, then we have the perineurium and we have the endoneurium respectively. First it covers the, uh, each nerve and then each fascicle and then each fiber of the nerve. So uh, at the same time it forms sheath. Uh, around the vessels and nerves, so which are which are carotid sheath and at the same time axillary sheath. So it's uh, it's an important structure. The deep fascia is an important structure for protecting the the important structures like nerves and, and arteries. So it forms capsules, uh, synovial membrane and bursa. So these three stuff it forms them in uh, relation of joints and um, it forms aponeurosis in palms and soles uh, as a palmar aponeurosis and uh, plantar aponeurosis so uh, palms are, are is this part of the hand which is a palm and sole is the part in the leg so basically it's, it's a, this is a palmar aponeurosis and this is a plantar aponeurosis so the sole means the the, let's say you could say the palm of the leg. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense, but it's a way of uh, making you understand what it is. So it also forms uh, something called a retinacula, a retinacula uh, uh, near some joints to hold hold them together. It holds tendons together uh, in place and prevents them from blowing uh, from blowing movements into moving moving so much actually. So it holds them all together. We have a flexor and an extensor retinacula. So the flexor retinacula is in the flexor region in here and the extensor retinacula is in the extensor region. So it holds all the tendons and the carpal bones and stuff like that. Yeah. So we also have the enterosseous membrane. The, enteros and the enterosseous membrane of the forearm. The enterosseous membrane is between the radius, the ulna and the radius. So basically the enterosseous membrane Let's say we have the ulna and we have the radius. So the, the it, it's between them. 
It's a fibrous tissue that's between them that holds them both together and prevents them from sudden movements, which can cause injuries. So this is the main uh, the main thing for the for the interosseous membrane, the main work mechanism for uh, for it. That's why it's there. So we have the the deep fascia of the of the upper limb. We have the uh, uh, main fascias of the upper limb, which are, uh, let's say, the beginning. In the beginning, we'll say the axillary fascia. Axillary fascia it forms the floor of the axilla. So this is the axilla. Why is it pushed in? Why is, does it have this concave shape? Why is it like inwards, pushed inwards? The reason of that that we have something called an axillary fascia. This axillary fascia forms the floor of the axilla. Now. We have the pectoral fascia, so as, as, as from its name, a pectoral fascia comes from the pectoralis major. So it encloses the pectoralis major muscle and continues laterally to the axillary fascia. So it closes in here and continues to the axillary fascia. And we have the, also the clavipectoral fascia. It fills in the space between the clavicle and the pectoralis minor. And we have the deltoid and scapular fascia. So it invests the deltoid and the scapular muscle respectively. And we also have the brachial uh, fascia, which is a very important fascia. It's like, it forms a sleeve around the arm like this. So let me explain this to you very, very quickly. On the board, let's say this is the brachial. We have cross section. We call a hand, a guy's hand that we don't need. We cut it off and we saw the 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 humerus this is the bone okay we're supposed to have uh, an uh, uh, anterior part let's say this is the anterior part and we have the posterior part so we have from the medial side and from the lateral side a fascia so we call this fascia the intermuscular septum so or septae so this is the intermuscular septae, the medial intermuscular septae and the lateral intermuscular septae. So it divides them into anterior part, a flexor part, and the posterior part, which is an extensor part. So, uh, and we have the antibrachial uh, fascia, which surrounds the forearm, flexor and extensor retinaculum. We have also the palmar aponeurosis. The palmar aponeurosis is, is any aponeurosis is very important because uh, anything in our body has an importance. That's why we have it, or otherwise we won't have it. So basically, the aponeurosis is, is a deep fascia. It's very hard. It it under the aponeurosis we have the palmar arch. Uh, it's an artery. We have the superficial pal palmar arch, which goes like this. And we have a deep palmar arch, which is very deep to it. So basically, if you don't have aponeurosis, every day we're all while shaking hands to people or some or having any injuries uh, falling on your hand would be very would be very bad for you. Or would, you would get really hurt because you uh, you will have an injury to the artery. That's very dangerous actually. So we have also the interosseous membrane, as I said. We have one interosseous membrane between the radius and the ulna. We have also another one between the tibia and the fibula. But this will be explained in another class of the lower limb muscles. And uh, that will be it for tonight. Thank you very much.